This is the way the blues began. They heard the tree in the green singing weird melody. And they made that the start of the blues. Went from jail, came a whale of a town. Louis Armstrong wore Star David 
um, every day of his adult life. In 1969, from his New York sickbed, he wrote Louis Armstrong and the Jewish Family in New Orleans, Louisiana, the year 1907. Celebrating his early years working for the Jewish Karnofsky family who recognized his talent and helped him purchase his first quartet. In the piece, Armstrong also praises the Jewish people's work ethic and sympathizes with their treatment in America, which he said in that early half of the century was slightly worse than the treatment of black people. On the first recording in which he performed a scat singing solo, the Heebie Jeebie Blues, it said that Armstrong dropped his music and began singing nonsense words. Many believe his so solo echoed the style and intonation of traditional Jewish davening or praying. Oi, see what you think.
first big hit was written by a black man, well, trust me, there were some people who weren't all that happy about Miss Tucker's success. The late great Alberta Hutter was none too pleased when Sophie Tucker sent her black maid down to Hunter's room to see if she might borrow one of her songs. Hunter refused. She later said of Tucker, Sophie, as good as she was, would never sing the blues like a Negro. And that's not boasting. You see, Sophie Tucker hasn't suffered like we've suffered. In 1979, at the age of 84, Alberta Hunter made a rare appearance on the Dick Cavett Show. She concluded a medley of her hits, songs like Downhearted Blues, A Good Man Is Hard to Find, and with I Love You Much Too Much, sung, in part, in the original Yiddish. The song was written for the Yiddish theater in 1934, and Hunter had learned it on a mission trip to Israel. While she marveled at the Holy Land, especially being able to walk in the steps of Jesus, her introduction to this song was brief. She told Mr. Cabot, this is a song I learned in Jerusalem. I'm going to sing some of, it, some of it in Yiddish.
There's not segregated nightclub in the country. I want a club where blacks and whites worked together behind the footlights and sat together out front. He said. There wasn't, so far as I know, a place like it in New York or in the whole country. A year earlier, Abel Maripol, a Jewish English teacher in New York, composed the song Strange Fruit. Maripol was inspired to write the piece by the 1930 photo of the lynching of two black men, Thomas Schiff and Abram Smith, in Marion, Indiana. Barney Josephson heard this song and brought it to the attention of Cafe Society's first headliner, Billie Holiday. Because of the power of the song, Josephson drew up some rules. Holiday will close with it. The waiters will stop all service in advance, and the room will be in darkness, except for spotlight on Holiday's face, and there will be no encore. status to white people in the United States of America. All along, Jews have been fighting right along with us, and many Jewish people joined W.E.B. Du Bois and other black people in founding the NAACP in 1909. Old Man River was written in 1927 by Jewish composers Jerome Kern and Oscar Hammerstein II. For their musical Showboat, in 1938, famed singer and actor Paul Robeson, who had made the song his own when he played the part of Joe in the London production of Showboat, he began subtly changing the lyrics to the song whenever he sang it in concert. In his lifetime, Paul Robeson's passion for social justice led him to be blacklisted by the House Un-American Activities Committee, saw him receive the International Stalin Prize from the then Soviet Union, and brought him to the heart of the civil rights movement in America. With a few words, 
Robeson changed this song of submission and hopelessness into a song, an anthem for change.
should love his brother. People all should love each other. Transformation decided she needed to start a start singing political songs. Broadway songwriting legends Betty Compton, Adolph Green, and Julie Stein wrote the incendiary lyric over the traditional Jewish tune Hava Megillah. Music, both the songs and the actors singing together, was an inextricable component of the civil rights movement. In 1961, Dr. Martin Luther King had this to say. The freedom songs are playing a strong and vital role in our struggle. They give the people new courage and a sense of unity. I think they keep a life of faith, a radiant hope in the future, particularly in our most trying times. In the early morning of 1963, just hours after President John F. Kennedy delivered his nationally televised civil rights address, one of the top leaders in this movement, Medgar Evers, pulled into his driveway after returning from a meeting with the NAACP lawyers. Emerging from his car and carrying an NAACP t-shirt that read, Jim Crow must go, Evers was struck in the back with a bullet, fired from an Enfield 1917 rifle. The bullet ripped through his heart. He staggered 30 feet before collapsing. He was taken to the local hospital in Jackson, Mississippi, where he was initially refused entry because of his race. His family explained who he was, and he was admitted. He died in the hospital 50 minutes later.
course, that song was written by little Robert Zimmerman, also known as Bob Dylan. Dylan, no matter what you may think of his singing style, had a very profound voice. In 1963, soul legend Sam Cooke covered Bob Dylan's folk classic, Blowing in the Wind. I was so moved that such a poignant song about racism in America could come from someone who wasn't black. I was more ashamed that I hadn't written something like that myself. Up to this time, concern over his image and fears of losing his largely white fan base kept Sam Cooke from writing something like that himself. However, he loved the Dylan tune so much, he immediately put it in his act. His wife nudged him, attempting to calm him down, telling him, Tell Kendra. To which he responded, They ain't gonna kill me because I'm Sam Cook. When they eventually persuaded him to leave, Sam Cook and his entourage drove away, calling out insults and glaring at the thorns. When they arrived at the Castle Motel on Spray Street downtown, the police were waiting for them and arrested them for disturbing the peace. The New York Times ran an AP report the following day, headlined, Negro Band. Sam Cooke finally found the inspiration to write a song like that.
Attending kindergarten through sixth grade at Burroughs, moving on through Carver, and graduating from Booker T. Washington in 1984. Shout out to the Hornets in the house! Yeah. Yeah. Mighty, mighty Hornets! I love it. Oh, we love all the rest of y'all too, but Hornet to pride is deep. And yet, Tulsa and our country in so many ways, is still so divided along racial lines. I wrote this show in part to remind us all what amazing things, powerful things can happen when two such disparate groups as blacks and Jews, and my sweet Jen here, <laughs> when Jews and blacks bond together to effect positive change. In 1954, Jewish songwriters Earl Robinson and David Arkin, father of actor Alan Arkin, were inspired by the landmark uh, Board versus the Brown 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 versus the Board of <laughs> Education, which outlawed racial segregation in public schools. The most famous version of the song, the 1971 hit by Three Dog Night, leaves out the verse that directly references the case, one that was included in the original version by their songwriters. And a little known 1957 recording by the most amazing black Jewish entertainer who ever lived, Sammy Davis. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. 
gentlemen, we wish to leave you tonight with a member from the 1969 television special, Get on Broadway, featuring Diana Ross's last appearance as a member of the Supremes. And this, another perfect fusion of black and Jewish soul, as performed by The Temptations.
our tech people, one of the more ladies right around here, our production manager, the wonderful Christy Dean Stalkup, our music director, Bill Rapinich on drums. And now for some individual bows, Mr. Nick Bushka, Ms. Tia Wright, Ms. Kevin Geller, Ms. Michelle Cutter, Mr. Alexander Tanan, Ms. Jennifer Lynn, Ms. Ann Lauderdale, Ms. Sarah Ma, Ms. Shelley Daniels Hutton, Ms. Suzanne Bloomfield, Mr. Robert Young, Ms. Lisa Cole, Mr. Sam Briggs, Mr. Carson Cass, Mr. Nash Wayne Reporters. My name is Mrs. Rebecca Ungerman. Oh, honey, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the cats, the cats of any color. And now the presumptuous encore. Sit down. Say hello to all of you inside the theater. So if you want to say hi, don't leave. We'll be right back.